My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us spend a moment in silent meditation as we prepare to worship our Lord. May the peace which passes all understanding, which has its source within the very nature of Father, Son, and Spirit, be with us as we meet to still our souls and join our hearts as one. May the gentle whisper of the God of peace speak to us through our worship, the readings, and understanding of Scripture, and be the message of our lives as we leave this place. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. 
and I welcome you to St. Mary's Episcopal Church on this fifth Sunday in Lent. Our service begins on page 351 in the Book of Common Prayer with the Penitential Order. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Let us now kneel before God as we say together the Ten Commandments. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. You shall not commit murder. Amen. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. You shall not steal. Amen. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Our song of praise this morning is hymn number 143 in the hymnal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out on, by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, Oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and the flesh had come upon them, and the skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our reading from the Psalms is Psalm 130, found on page 784 in your Book of Common Prayer, or in your insert. We'll read it responsively, parting at the half verse. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, o Lord, sin, for there is forgiveness with you. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. O oh, Israel, wait for the Lord. For with, the Lord there is mercy. with him there is plenteous redemption. And A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. 
Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from. Oh, wrong one. (laughs) Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, Though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. And the disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Now Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to consider them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, 
your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And when she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews, who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. And they followed her, because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Then Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping. He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. to you this morning in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. Gotta love oak pollen. So this morning we have this rather long and interesting gospel in John, and it's all about the resurrection. And we have so many, as John often does, have so many oppositional forces in this gospel. We hear about darkness versus light about life versus death, about faith versus doubt. And we all live in those oppositional forces. We all live having to make choices between what goes on all around us. And we always find it kind of funny in this is that we don't know that much about Lazarus. Lazarus is not really that sketched out for us. We have many stories about Martha and Mary, and we kind of picture them in our head, but... We have no idea about Lazarus. Is he tall? Is he short? Is he dark-haired? Who knows? But maybe that's intentional on John's part. Maybe because that's what John wants us to do is to put ourselves 
in Lazarus' place. That we are all, to a certain degree, Lazarus. We are all wanting that healing, wanting that resurrection that Jesus has to offer. And sometimes we find ourselves in kind of a dead place, like Lazarus did. And Jesus tells his disciples, those who believe in me will have everlasting life even though they die. Those who live and follow me will never die. Now, we as Christians kind of know that's not true. We all die physically. We've buried many of our friends in the last couple of years here at St. Mary's. We know that our human bodies come to an end, that we do, in fact, die. That's part of life. So what is Jesus really talking about when he says, those who believe in me will not die? Well, what he's really saying is that those who believe in me, death will not be the final act. For those who believe in me, there will be more after this life. There will be plentiful after this life in the resurrection. But there's a very important note here for us. Jesus doesn't promise us that we will be resurrected. Jesus promises us that we can be resurrected. It's a choice that lies with us. Just saying that we believe in Jesus Christ isn't enough. Just coming to church on Sunday isn't enough. We have to turn our lives and turn our hearts toward Jesus Christ and truly believe in him. Truly have faith in him in order for us to achieve that promise, that guarantee of resurrection. That's the cost of that resurrection is us giving up our earthly lives for his heavenly life. It's the choice that we have to make between light and darkness. We can either follow the culture of this world or we can follow what Jesus calls us to. Following God's commandment, following God's word, doing the things that God has called us to do. And if you've paid attention at all to what's going on in our world these days, the culture of the world is diametrically opposed to the culture and word of God. We rarely see God's commandments in play with what goes on in our world around us today. It's all do whatever makes you feel good. Do whatever lets you get ahead. Right? Lying isn't wrong. The bad part is if you get caught. Lying's okay as long as you don't get caught. Do bad things. Get ahead. It's all good as long as you get ahead. That's what our culture's preaching. That's what our culture's teaching us. Is that morals and values don't matter. That faith in Jesus Christ doesn't matter. That God doesn't matter. And I can tell you right now, brothers and sisters, we can walk that path, but it's going to pull us full away from the promises of Jesus Christ. He makes it very clear to us in our gospel today. Those who follow me and believe in me will have everlasting life. It's a choice that we have to make. We can't do both. There is no way that we can follow the culture of this world and follow Jesus Christ. They're too far apart. There's no common ground. If we follow Jesus Christ, we have to turn our back on the current culture. And if we follow the current culture, then we are most certainly turning our back on Jesus Christ. We have a choice that we have to make. Who are we going to follow? Who are we going to give our heart to? Who is going to be the leader of our lives? Because we hear Jesus tell Mary, yes, 
There will be a resurrection to come after we die. But what about being resurrected right now? What about being resurrected in Jesus Christ out of our life of sin and death? What if we could wake up tomorrow and have new life just like Lazarus? If we could have a new spirit put within us to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Would we buy it? Good evening. Would we do that? And welcome to Thursday evening. Would we wake up with that new life and that new spirit? Our service knowing that the other path leads to death and destruction? Well, we can. We can each and every day, every day that we wake up in the morning. We have an opportunity to turn our life, to turn our hearts toward Jesus Christ and accept him. And say, yes, Lord, I believe I will follow you. And then actually live our life like that. We can't live for Jesus for two hours on Sunday and then live the rest of the week under the culture. It doesn't work. We have to live our lives day after day, hour after hour for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when we do that, we can be resurrected from a life of sin. We can fall into that death that we have from sin. It numbs our souls. It numbs our feelings. We get so inconsiderate of others because of our sin that we become dead to their feelings. We become so blind to others that we become dead to their needs. We become so involved with the things that the world has to offer us that we become dead to integrity and honor. That's the sinful world we're living in right now. So many people are, charging, are, are picking the world over Jesus Christ. And we see what the result of that is. Look around at how dangerous our world has become. Look at how unfeeling our world has become. But we can change it. Just as Jesus changed it in his time, we can change it in ours. We can be the beacon of light that Jesus was to the world. But it starts with us waking up and deciding to follow Jesus and to live our life as he commanded us to. We have to be a shining example when people look at us for what it is to be a Christian, that we are being a good Christian. Right? You ask most people what they think about Christians these days, they think we're hypocritical. Because we do one thing and say another. We live a whole separate life Monday through Saturday than we do on Sunday. And we think coming in for a Sunday service is going to wash all that away. But then we go right back to doing it again the next Monday. That's not how repentance works. That's not at all how repentance works. Jesus calls us to confess our sins. To beg forgiveness from God for our sins and then turn away from doing the sins that we were doing. It is a change in life. And when we make that decision, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, things change for us. We automatically have a new relationship with God. He is now our friend, our Father. He is someone that we can have an intimate relationship with. Not the cold God of wrath from the Old Testament, but the God of love that we hear his son tell us about. The God of love that his son models for us. What it means to be caring and considerate. To take care of the other person around us. When we accept Jesus Christ, we see all that. We see how to be him in the world. 
And when we make that decision, then we feel new life bubble up within us. Think about the first time you really felt the Holy Spirit strong in yourself. And it was like there was just something coursing through you that added so much new life to you. You had such a great outlook on life. You were so happy. You were so joyful because you felt the power of God in you. Because you felt the love and grace of Jesus Christ in you. And you felt the Holy Spirit working through you. You were on a whole new level of life. To where that's all that mattered was our love of Jesus Christ. Everything else fell away. It wasn't important. Not power and prestige, not money, but having that life force within us that only God can give us. But it's a choice that we have to make. We have to say yes to that. We have to say, yes, that's what I want. I'm tired of living in a worldly world where every single day I'm numb to what goes on around me. I walk past people who are homeless and I don't see them. I walk past people who are hungry and I turn my face from them. I walk past people in need and it doesn't even register anymore. They're just scenery along the road. And I've lost in my heart the ability to care the ability to have compassion, the ability to think there but for the grace of God, go I. That's what we lose when we focus on the world instead of Jesus Christ. We have a life that is dead, a life that is numb. But we can be resurrected out of that life. Jesus has that power to lift us up, to change us, to transform us into new people. People that see the world around them, people that care, people that are his hands and feet and voice in the world. That's a heck of a resurrection. We don't have to wait until we die. We can get God's favor now. We can be with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit now. We just have to make that decision and turn our lives around so that God is in front of us and not behind us. That we are focused on Him. We are listening to His voice. We are doing as He commands us to do. That's what resurrected life is all about. Dying to our old sin and being raised again in the love of Jesus Christ. That is the power of resurrection. That's why we are so joyful on Easter morning. Because we feel that love and power on that day particularly. We feel that power of Jesus Christ. But I'm going to tell you, starting next week, we come into Holy Week. And I'm not getting down on you, but I'll make a guarantee to you. If you come to Palm Sunday and then Easter Sunday and that's all you do, that joy is going to be diminished. Unless you come Thursday night and sit in the upper room and break bread with Jesus Christ. Unless you come Friday and walk the stations and hear the sound of the whip and the nailing of the nails. Unless you come in here on Good Friday night and live into the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us, that joy is going to be diminished. Don't you want the full joy of Easter? Don't you want to fill that well up in your heart and just change your outlook on life, change the way you look at and act with other people? We have to walk the way of Jesus Christ. That's what this whole Lent has been about, walking in His footsteps doing the things that he calls us to do. But it's a choice. 
It's not something that just happens. And every day we get that choice. If you'll note in this gospel today, it's actually a bookend. It's a bookend with the resurrection. Today Jesus starts his, his walk into Jerusalem with the resurrection of Lazarus. That is actually the act that got all the high priests and scribes mad at him, looking to put him to death. It was because he performed that resurrection. And the other bookend is his own resurrection on Easter Sunday. When he defeats the power of death and is raised again to bring all of us that promise of salvation. But there's a cost to it. There's a cost to it for us. We have to walk with him. We have to follow him and we have to turn our lives around. To be followers of Christ. We can't live in the world and expect a divine prize at the end of our life. If we want the resurrection, we have to live into it day by day. Every single day. And am I saying that makes us perfect? Absolutely not. I falter and fail by the hour. Angry thoughts at people, things I probably shouldn't say when I hit my thumb with a hammer. Right? We're not perfect. I dare you to find in the Bible where Jesus Christ told his followers, I'm going, but I want you to be perfect. He never said it, did he? He never said you have to be perfect. What did he say? I want you to try and follow me. I want you to follow me day by day. I want you to pick up your cross and follow me day by day. And you know what? If you stumble and fall, I'll be there to pick you back up and to get you back on the road. But you have to follow me. Jesus bore his cross. The cross was always in his mind. Throughout all of the Gospel of John, he knew that's what his ending was, was death on the cross. But he tells us the same thing. Pick up your cross and follow me. Well, what is our cross? What is the cross that we bear? Well, what it is is giving up all the fake prizes that we get from our worldly culture. It costs not to live in the world. Maybe we miss out on